This episode is brought to you by a collaboration of Wolf Craig Distillers and First Point USA. First Point USA is the world's biggest international sports scholarship agency and since 2001 has helped more than 30,000 talented sports people secure places at some of the leading universities and colleges in the United States. Rugby is now the fastest growing collegiate sport with an increasing number of programmes offering life-changing rugby scholarships for prospective student athletes. If you are interested in finding out more, please visit firstpointusa.com. Wolf Craig Distillers is a new premium drinks brand headed up by two of the greatest master blenders in the whiskey industry, Richard Patterson OBE and Ian McMillan. With their recent write-up in Forbes magazine this month and their limited edition first release, Wolf Craig 30-year-old premium blend is now available. So be sure to get over to their website at wolfcraig.com. Was involved there, but it's an interception. It's George Bridge. It's a breakaway try. Minas Philly somersaults him now. Big George is going again. Is he back heel? Oh, back heel, and he's got it. Little idea at the end for the Barbarians. You know what? It could work. Here's Bridge and the Barbarian fingerprints all over that try. The Barbarians in true Barbarian style. Hello and welcome back to the Barbarian Show whereby we welcome some of the most famous faces to have donned the most iconic club rugby jersey in the world as we build up to the next fixture for the Barbarians against the World 15 on the 28th of May. Tickets are still available for that one on ticketmaster.co.uk. Today, we've got this big fella, former England, British and Irish Lion and Barbarian, George Cruz. Join us on the sofa. You signed off against the Barbarians. So Finished up, yeah. There yeah. we go. Six six months done. Um, we start off every pod, every show, with the same question. What does the Barbarians mean to you? I thought it was going to be how much you hate Ryan Wilson. <laughs> um, <laughs> there we go. No, no, no. no, 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 no I'm looking. Let's go. get it out there. Sorry, sorry. Let's get it out there. Yeah. Just clear that, clear that one. But um, uh, what does it mean? Uh, enjoyment, I'd say. Like, it is It's ridiculous. It is actually a ridiculous setup. Um, I'd say... It's like something special, you know. It's, it's it's pretty. It's invite only, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Invitation. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I'd say it's like there is a, there's an exclusive feeling about it. Um, but yeah, it's just a, a a joke of a week, really, followed up by an international game. So it's yeah, it's it's. When you say a joke of the week, you mean like a joke of how training and how good that yeah 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 a joke of a week in terms of just pure carnage into. Into literally an international game. But you're a Saris player. Mm. If any player has built the bar bars, I mean, I've heard about your trips at Saris. Yeah. I've heard about the weeks, you know, leading up to big games. Yeah, you've gone yeah, yeah. and backed up a good piss up. Yeah, so you, yeah. Anyone's built for it. You Saris boys are built for it. Yeah, there, there, there might be a correlation there. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I think like we had a, a rule that if you if we go on a trip, like you, you have to win, otherwise the, the trips just don't continue. So. Before we get yeah. into the detail, do you remember how the, the invite came about? Uh, Robbie Dean, so I was playing, so I finished up in England, went to Japan. Uh, Robbie Dean's obviously does a lot of, uh, was he your bar, bar Bars guy, coach? Uh, we had uh, Dave Rennie. Yeah, so he does a he lot of like, brilliant, he, he, Robbie, he's, in, yeah. he's in there, he likes it. Um, and he kept saying like, whenever when I was in Japan, he kept saying, oh, we'll put you in the Bar Bars. I was like, yeah, all right, all right. But um, time came around and yeah, I, I, I said, look, is this something we can do? And yeah, we we're, we're up on the trip. So I mean, it, like I said, it was it was it's a special week. It is something very different. And it was, uh, I guess, that that week slightly different because you had Fabian Galti yeah. in charge, essentially yeah. given carte blanche to to bring in some of the, the majority of his French squad. Yeah, but yeah. and and Sean Edwards as his coaching team. Yeah. Thibaut is S and C coach. You know the whole the whole framework was there, and you were you were I guess one of the handful of of non. Yeah. French guys alongside the likes of Will Skelton and so on. Yeah, exactly that. I mean, like I'd been, I'd been texting Danny Kerr like all week, uh-huh. probably about all month really, and like being like, right, we're going to do this with the boys. We'll do this. Obviously, we're going to you know London, London soil. Like we'll treat them here, take them there. 
we get to the airport and Danny's like on the way out with his bags and he's like, I've got a call up from England. I was just like, hello, darkness. Man. Yeah, he, um, he, and then he continued to text like photos of like, all right, we've got this team meeting. This is our schedule. And I was just like, we're on a, we're on two parallel universes here, but. Don't Monaco. Yeah. Like planning on going for points to protein shakes of England. Yeah. Poor bloke. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like he, 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 like he'd packed his bag. He was in. He was like, he's just on. He just had to turn around. It was, it was tough for him. But um, yeah, not for us. Yeah. That, you talk about Monaco. Mm. That of all places. Yeah. That, I reckon that's got to be one of the best places for the Barbados to get up for their first. Uh, yeah. President's uh, dreams. Yeah. Say. It was like because there is like I forget is it Prince. Albert, yeah, Prince Albert, Prince Albert, Albert yeah. like loves his rugby, yeah, yeah. and, and he, Charlene, his wife, yeah, yeah, yeah also loves her rugby, and um, like they, they essentially paid for everything, and they, they like made sure that everything was like super perfect. We couldn't get in trouble. It was all like ironed out before. Couldn't uh, get in trouble. Still got in trouble, <laughs> but yeah, but like, they, like it was, it was incredible. We got treated very, very well, um, and like some of the. You know, you go into these like beautiful restaurants and you, and there'd be people like, you know, clearly on there, maybe their first ever like, I don't know, their wedding anniversary meal or something like really meant a lot to them. And then in the, and then like 10 minutes later, you just got like breadsticks going everywhere and like booze and like 12 bottles of vodka coming. You're just thinking like, <laughs> yeah, they're good. Yeah. You should, probably should move them around the corner or something, but no, nah, it was, it was good. And, and actually I joke like we, Obviously, highly respectful and uh, took care of, uh, of of everything that we needed to. Is it the her- Hermitage you stayed at? Uh, I can't remember, mate. There was there was a lot of Ferraris parked outside and a lot of people taking photos of and them. And gold. And yeah. gold <laughs> and money and, yeah. Uh, yeah. It, it, it was, it, it, when I saw it, I was like, Monaco, that's that's going to be interesting. Uh, and it was, it was interesting. My, my I, question is, if Fabian Gauté is in charge, right? Yeah. Did the French boys, because it was majority French mm. guys playing, it was almost, they talked about it as like a warm-up for their trip. Were they playing Japan or something? They were, yeah. yeah they, they were going, yeah, they were going that, on yeah. tour on that. Yeah. So it was like yeah. almost a warm-up game for yeah. they used them. Did, did they have to behave themselves or did they have a good time? Matt, like, it, we got sent a schedule before and I remember reading it and it was, it honestly had like, for the first three days there were two gym sessions in it and there was like a field session and a contact session, like as in per day. And I, and I was just like, what? Like, obviously, it'd been a copy and paste, maybe from a from a French thing. But like, you know, a few of the older heads we got in there were like, Fabian, we need a word, mate. This <laughs> this is about building memories and like painted the picture that this is you know something that they'll remember for life, and it's well worth the you know remember the, the decline in their sort of nutrition and gym programs. But and, and honestly, that yeah, to move just just rip, rip the schedule up, and we like we wrote our own schedule from there. It was good. unbelievable because yeah. I remember the. The, the makeup of the squad, obviously mm. the, the, the semi-finalists from the top 14 weren't released. Yeah. So it was largely sort of your second or third string French guys who were, and then the likes of Charles Olivon coming back yeah. from a, from a long-term injury. So Class loads player. of guys really. Uh, what a good guy. Yeah, really. Yeah. I mean, he, he came across in, mm. in camp with my committee hat on. Like yeah. they, they were all, all of the French guys yeah. were at, you know, the, the young guy Max Spring and Baptiste yeah, Couillou yeah. and yeah. you know all the, as well as the experienced guys like Viremi Vakatawa and Damien mm. Pinot and and guys like that. But these guys came into the squad hungry because yeah. they're obviously aware they're twelve, fifteen months out from a rugby world cup with their coach, host venue, opportunity for these guys to to put themselves front and centre. So that dynamic with regards to being able to be serious enough that mm. you can showcase your best whilst also having yeah. the time of your life within the Baba's squad isn't necessarily an easy dynamic, but you obviously yeah. managed to find it. Yeah, like I think like they did get given a pass to say, look, just enjoy yourselves. Like it's, it's super important. You know, we talked about trips earlier. You you got like to go on trips with <laughs> with your teammates and build. And, and from an international perspective, a French Baba's type thing. Like the perfect opportunity to do it, um, you know. And they they sat down in the team meeting, the first one, and they were like, Look, "Okay, we're going to be, you know, there's other spe- speakers here in you know, English, or whatever. But we will talk in English. We will work with that." Three minutes later, they were talking in French. But like, <laughs> like you not. could you see, and you could see the energy of, you know, when a team's building and like you you feel like right, we're gonna we're gonna be starting winning stuff. You could see the energy, especially with Sean Edwards, Fabio, and like, uh, and that young group of French players that they're doing unbelievable stuff in their leagues, but also on the international scene as well. Um, you know, like that, that's that I thought was 
it was really cool to be part of because you can you know you just you step in for a week to to, to feel that energy and, and so on but yeah they're, they're charging they're, they're i'm excited to see them at the world cup how would you describe that dynamic between fabian galti and sean edwards um interesting um sean's got that like classic what do you call it franglais it's like <laughs> every word's repeated twice and there's not many of them so it's like sur le ballon sur le ballon it's like okay that's that's where we're at but i mean they they listen and they listen hard and he, he's he's obviously an unbelievable coach his, his background is his career his background everything is like leans towards huge amount of respect and like the defense is solid um but yeah he's he, he keeps it short and sweet and, yeah. and they listen how many nights were you in how, how many nights were you in monaco for we were there for four nights um and then came back to uk for uh you know we thought we were going to dip off and then we came back for for one more so where did you train when you were out there they found a just found a, a uh like, it was you, a bit, it's, yeah. it's generically it's hyde park isn't it when you stay in the grove yeah. and you play at twickenham it's just across the road in hyde park. yeah it was something equally as budget it was uh it, <laughs> you know like we were driving past these huge beautiful stadiums and we we're like yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like we're going to train here. It's like, ah, oh, okay. But I mean, fifteen minutes or so of training just to sweat out. It, that's all you need. That's all you need, isn't it? Like it, it's 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 pretty well trodden path. Like the the players there are there for a reason. Uh, they're there for a good bit of crack, but they can play rugby. And as long as there's like enough moves to like figure it out, and a large large part of them were all French moves. So um, and then a couple of like special plays which you can you know tease people with. Then then you're all right. And your roommate, obviously. I remember speaking mm. to you because you were on another podcast whilst yeah. you were out there, pretty blurry eyed. Yeah. Big Will Skelton, how was he? Yeah. You obviously well, knew him well yeah. from Saris. Yeah, I did. And, and I was like, I think, who am I going to room with? I walked in and there was yeah. size, like, custom made <laughs> size 19. So it was, it was either like Ronald McDonald or Crusty the Clown or something. But like, it, it was Will Skelton and his, yeah, he's a big man. Um, I, I, I've got a lot of time for him. I think he's. A, um, I think he is an unbelievable, like a world class player. Um, but he's got good band, good social, good crack off field, um, and he likes it. Like he, he does like it. He's and he's. He sometimes has previously on trips struggled up to back up, um, like night after night. But he, you know, he was on flying form. I think there was a rule like if if either one of you, either one of us, kind of went home first, they'd have to you know prepare and buy some. Uh, you know, some some burgers or something that you know, so that there's there's room service laid out on your bed when you come back. All set out. That's some rules, yeah. And I came back one night and there were f- fifteen burgers and fifteen <laughs> chips. It, honestly, I, I was like, what "Cheers, Prince Albert." What was, he thinking? what was he thinking? And then it was like, you know, um, what's the story like the fairy tale, Hansel and Gretel, where they're like leaving. It was like chips all the way to his bed, and he's like <laughs> passed out with that. Jing was got naked with a load of burgers yeah, on top of him. No, it, uh, it was good though. I put them in the corridor. Gone. Like next morning, obviously, someone's like, "Lads, you wouldn't believe it." I came out, and there was burgers in the corridor. I was like, "Yeah, that's really scary." He but got he got a red card that week, didn't he? Do you reckon that was tactical because he, yeah. he was? No, we've been discussing. All, yeah, we have been discussing all week. Like, I think I was due to have, uh, and we'd settled on and, and handshake that I would have forty minutes and, and bow out gracefully. Ah. Um, so, you, like, with that in mind, you, you know, you you do put yourself in in a certain hole, uh, and. um yeah, he got uh, he got red card. Thirty minutes in, God, the guy went to sleep. It was I can't remember. Yeah, what happened? You, uh, well, we, 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 Will, was yeah. it Will Stewart? Yeah, we we were um, we were both in line. And this is a game that I'll always lose. But we thought it would be funny in terms of who could who could possibly make like the biggest hit between us in the game. <laughs> yes, and we were both in the line together. Yeah, and I've got Johnny Hill in front of me, and, and uh, I think yeah, I think Scott's got Will Stewart in front of him. I'm like, and we're next to each other. I'm like, yeah, go on then. So I dart out the line. He does. He does a miss pass completely, like well past me. But scouts just like melts him, melts him, and he's and he's like oh, to the point that he's holding him, him, and he's just like. Oh. Yeah, I do remember oh, that because he like, holds him as if yeah. like I've got you. Don't Looked worry. across the yeah. referee, held him, yeah. and actually, Not but the, the the issue will sort of drop the ball. So it was like yeah, yeah, yeah. drop the ball one, two, two ten, bang, and 11, obviously 12, when you're when you're seven feet the, tall. Yeah. And you've and you've you've not dropped your body height. Your shoulders. Does a red card at Barbar's ban you? Yeah, it did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Which is fair, fair enough. I mean, he knocked yeah. he knocked he knocked the lad out. So, um, how was yeah. it, how was that whole experience? Obviously, called into the Barbar's squad, mm. largely French French group to play against England. The you know yeah. the, the the side who you had represented, you know, nearly fifty times. Yeah, um, it was like it was unbelievable. Yeah, like. 
I'd, I, br- I broke my thumb like maybe three weeks before. So I was, I was thinking, because right, we were in the Japanese top league final. So I was like, oh, I've kind of ruined this. But we managed to like find a way in which we could strap it properly. And I was like, okay, so if I can finish on the final, then then go into and finish on the bar bars at home. Like I had maybe 100 odd friends, family there. and like, Really? You know, to, oh, that's and then to get the win and stuff and, and actually to like fully enjoy the game. Like it, 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 you should take those games for what they are, which is yeah. a good bit of... A good laugh, like they are. It's a piss up on the week. It should be taken as a good bit of fun, uh, like a like a promo for the game, I think. Um, and it was unbelievable. Like, yeah, proper special memory. Definitely one. Uh, I, I I know I'm very um, probably it's like rare enough that you get to bow out and then play a, a game like that and finish on on your own terms like that. So, uh, yeah. what are your overriding memories of it? Uh, of 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 the day as a whole, and, and yeah. I guess particularly cramp. the eighty minutes. Oh, heck, it's cramp. Yeah. Like, I, yeah, I, I, me- I remember on the Friday I woke up, uh, and yeah, like I said, chips everywhere. Me and Scott looking at each other, and just like, <laughs> just the fear of like actually we've been on a five day stag do, and now we've got to play, and and a decent international team. You know, they had good players in there as well. Um, like that fear, and I think like as you go downstairs to the reception and you look at the Fijian still drinking, you're like, okay, well this is fine. I feel I feel a yeah, bit more sober now, but like that that fear, and then and then to like yeah, get get into it, get through it, not pull your your hammy and you know tear your, your bicep off and stuff like that. But you get a bit of cramp at the 60 minute mark. But yeah, to to play the whole game and and like I said, the main thing for me was like in front of my friends and family, and to like have that as my my finishing game is. There is a tradition of you know that being the last game for for people bowing out the game, yeah. um, and I'm just I'm just really happy that like injury aside and things like that, I could manage to do it uh, yeah. on on that side. You mentioned the Fijians and yeah. uh, cool story around it with, with Fabian Galti was was due to select Levane Bottia in yeah. the in the back row for that game that week, yeah. and but I think Monday Tuesday he found out that him and Virumi Vakatawa yeah. had played together in the centres. Back at school in Fiji, so he selected the yeah, Vanipotia. Yeah. The you know the demolition man yeah. ends up getting picked in the centre against. Imagine being the England boys yeah, after that's goal. named. Yeah, I mean, I, I honestly think if he could have caught the ball that game and wasn't like so drunk, we would have won by seventy. He, he was, he'll admit it himself. <laughs> Who Botia? Yeah, we yeah. did like three over the tops because no one wants to practice lineouts and those things apart from me. Uh, <laughs> and um, and yeah, like <laughs> he dropped all of them. But uh, he is an unbelievable player. Yeah. Ah, good player. He's, he's, he's a, a powerful player. man, eh? Yeah, the, yeah, the Fijians yeah. are. So the Fijians had a good one, though. They <laughs> they sent him, did they? Memory yeah. would have had to be careful because obviously the French stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was he was he careful? Or no, was no. Like, like, like I said, shot? it was pretty. Um, it was like it was it was understood that it was there to like right. Let's create some memories. Uh, I think that's like the what do you call it the, the case that we put across to like yeah, yeah. how we can you know maybe tweak the the training schedule and so on but yeah it was brilliant like fabian was like he's a cool man isn't he he's like he's he one of the cool, cool customers cool, is, is yeah. he as cool as he looks yeah he is yeah, yeah. And he looks i've seen other cool. other coaches starting to try and pull off the old trainer suit combo yeah. it's just like nah you don't have the glasses yeah. as well boys yeah, so yeah, don't, yeah. Nah, don't he's, go. he's a cool man and he knows his players he knows he's got a good understanding i don't think he's you know he's gonna get that Coaches get a little bit out of touch. I think he's very much in touch with his well. Well, that's it. Eddie Jones is obviously going to be the coach for yeah. the game on the 28th of May at Twickenham. I feel if I was a player in that squad, I'd be coming downstairs being like, oh, I hope I don't bump into Eddie. Oh, uh, really? Yeah, I th- that's how I think oh, I would no, feel. I, I would that. worry. Whereas I think Gautier, yeah. were you ever worried like going down to breakfast being like, he's going to see how rough I am? No, no. I mean, Ed, like... Eddie, Eddie, Eddie yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he, he'll know. Like he's he's been around the block. He knows what a Barbar's fixture is, and he he likes his red wine himself. Like he'd he'd tuck in. I'd oh, imagine yeah. so as well. Yeah, yeah, he's he'd be like he that'd be his zone. But imagine you're an England player. Yeah, and yeah. Then, see that? Yeah, I didn't have to deal with that. But that um, I, I I'd say it, I'd say it, I'd say it'd be quite relaxed on Did that. Did you ever get the? The text messages in the middle of the night that Eddie Jones was. That I was, only was got them in the middle of the night. Yeah. Did you? Yeah. yeah. Because I, I don't no, imagine no. you'll carry that through to Barbas, but that yeah, no, no, I don't. don't yeah, well, yeah, another reason because talk, he was yeah. on the pitch. Yeah, yeah. But that um, that that was that was a a thing that he was. Yeah, but for, like right? like as I guess as a head coach of a, of a country, you only get a certain amount of time, and when you're an at workaholic, like he just he'd do his work at the night. So um, yeah, like what, what be, would he text you at night? It, it, it's like like you, you need to yeah yeah no you need to stop uh, you need to like 
stop getting tackled so easily and like send us send us a clip like that i'll be like okay fine what's our no. time like late at night or early hours of the morning or uh yeah i'd say early early hours like there's there's you know he's he's had he has two drivers and things like that like he, he works and he works and that's what I'm, i've got so much admiration yeah. for him he works unbelievably hard yeah, yeah. um uh, as most top class coaches do um but yeah he's he's not afraid to tell you when and what to do at whatever hour we've yeah. got i've got obviously we get onto this bit you've got, you've got 100 friends and family there mm. you lasted the whole game yeah i think they took me off at 79 yeah but before you came off you obviously had a plan about kicking some conversions talk us through the uh the i actually, thinking of I that. actually didn't there wasn't any well, yeah you must have spoken I about pro- it i week. promise you i promise you there wasn't like i know there was like an ongoing um there's an ongoing thing which like you if you retire you're you're supposed to kick a thing and and i did in the week kick a was doing some kicking thing with will greenwood for some reason but what place kicking place kicking yeah but it wasn't like it wasn't like right we're gonna get to this point you're gonna start kicking um but i mean yeah look but you hadn't practiced any back heels no 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 definitely not no, but but that what you reckon that came to you at that moment because you stood oh, with a ten you, yeah. I you and you think I'm just going to try and back heel this one over the post. I just I wanted yeah I don't know it's like I said Vavas should be about that stuff. Yeah, I'm, like, I'm with yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, I'm I've, just I've wondering seen, uh, whether you would. No, it wasn't pre-planned. Uh, like to take a kick, I think I was on on the cards like to to take a kick. Yeah. Um, but yeah, to get six points at Twickenham when your last game is <laughs> is an odd number. Yeah, uh, so good. And um, the back yeah, heel. Back here, yeah. I got a couple of dirty looks from from some of the lads, but oh really? Yeah, well, nah. as as you'd expect, yeah, as you'd expect. Yeah, because if I'm one of the England players, I'm I'm thinking, ah, that's good yeah. crack that. That's yeah, no, crack. it was it was like I said, it was just an unbelievable sort of. Was Danny was on the field at that week. point? Danny uh, yeah, I think he was. Yeah, <laughs> surely you yeah, got yeah. stuck into him, Sam, mate. We've had a good yeah, week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like a lot of talk around the field, but yeah, like also they're your mates, you know, and and like you know what it's like to play against your mates. Yeah, you yeah. you get like and get a bit fiery, but then also you know there's there's heaps of like chat going throughout the game, and um yeah, you got like I said, you got a healthy relationship and uh, and a good respect for what that game is about, and it's it is about. But a bit of enjoyment. I suppose most of it would have been like lying in rucks saying, boys, please, I'm absolutely blown here. Oh, it's like stretching your calves out for half of it, I reckon. Like, there was, there, at one point I turned around and I, I think Penno scored this beautiful try in the corner and like I turn around and there's just like, it's like some sniper had been shooting lads in the, in the legs. Like, they're just like, ah, <laughs> <laughs> like people physio. Well, it's a nice little plug for your company at the moment then. Yeah, well, could probably uh, get involved. Out of, yeah, out of pure like, knowledge of what's going through i'm gonna we're, we're gonna send them we've got our, my company four or five we've got plug uh hydration tablets so i'm gonna send them a, a couple of hundred of them to a couple to get, hundred yeah, yeah to per, person. Per, per person <laughs> to get stuck into because you, you just can't, you can't it's a it's a tough week to do it without those sort of things i, I remember vividly going down to the, the dressing room afterwards mm. with, with the rest of the committee and the yeah. buzz about the place obviously all, all the players having had the time of their lives playing mm. a lot of them playing at Twickenham for the first time yeah certainly winning at Twickenham yeah, for, yeah. for the first time just having had the, the most unbelievable day and I remember bumping into Tebow the S&C coach who was yeah. walking around giving high fives and then he pulled me to one side he was like this is a disaster and I said why he said because these are my my French guys, yeah. and they've been on the piss for five days, and they've just gone out and proved a, a, that you can still do that and perform. This is not good for me because yeah. I think you know World Cup twenty nineteen. He had they kept the French squad together basically for three months, and they wouldn't release them back home Friday to Sunday like most mm. most international teams do because they feared that they'd undo all the good work. So they brought the families into camp. They spent massive budget, and he managed like he's been as pivotal, arguably as as Galtier mm. and Sean Edwards because physically he's turned them around. And then that week just made a mockery of all S and C, all of the fitness because they went out there. Just and re-engaging with like what it was to play rugby as a kid, yeah, yeah, and that's yeah. what a lot of people always say about Babas is that it reminds you as to why you started playing rugby because you basically go out, express yourself, mm. have fun as you do it. Uh, but a lot of the time, the professional ranks that's that's kind of taken. I reckon he's been smart though. I reckon he's now got a gauge right who's the loosest on the piss. <laughs> so coming up, he's going to go. I, hey, I've seen you in a Barbas week, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right? You pull back. I can trust you. You'll be yeah. all right. Yeah, <laughs> Let yeah, you yeah. go a little bit. So maybe he's, he's, they've been clever there. They've gone. We've got more of an insight into some of these boys. Yeah. yeah. No, nah, that's that sports science chat went out the window. I think that week, but 
it, there's definitely an element to it of like trust and sort of you like you want to like it's that fine balance of taking the absolute piss but clearly you don't want like there is a name to the bar bars there's like like a huge cultural side to it there's a you don't want to go overboard and, and ruin the opportunity for others uh, in the future. So, and personal um, pride as well, right? Yeah, because yeah. Uh, you know, as, as professional athletes, mm. you you stand by what you put out on the pitch. Yeah. And I, like you know, I know I know John Spencer as as president, and and the late Mickey Steele Bodger. Yeah, he's a loose the, man. To start to start the week, it's always look. Yeah. We're here for a great time, but you know, the performance at the weekend mm. also also matters. So you always know that that's the the case. Yeah, well, I couldn't agree more. And and when you do go on the piss, like you, you know, there is that galvanizing thing, and you understand, like you, you got to do the business on the weekend. But um, yeah, it's, it is it is something unique, definitely. I'm just trying to work out. By the way, everyone we've had on here speaks about the magician. Yeah. Did he come to Monaco, or did you see him back <laughs> no, in we London? Saw him back in London. Oh, <laughs> there. Yeah, Was yeah. he there? Yeah, yeah. If it's the right, if it's the same person, I'm thinking of. Yeah. It, it's always the same person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Did and all it, eyes? Did you did you have like 23 French eyeballs turned to you when you arrived back in London to say, "I mean, all right, Crusoe, what are we up to?" It was stressful. That yeah, like and especially because. Like I would have liked DC it. to be on. Yeah, to, yeah, to at least yeah, help. Yeah, but you yeah. turn in, you do turn into tour guide, and yeah. there's like, so we went to. Basically, we got back and they were like, right, at that point, they then, you know, there was a, a bit of a budget given out to, to go on a night out. So some of the older guys, we, we collected the we collected that, basically, uh, or a large majority of it. And I thought, right, let's take them to like a proper nice pub, good English pub. You yeah. know, like, and, yeah, and nice a good English that. pub it is something to be like admired and sort of like... People have got, we've got the sound, sound guy nodding his head. He, yeah, yeah. A good English pub is like, right, I think that's good. So we take them there, really nice live band, pull a few strings, get them in there, order like the Guinness, good drafts, good like uh, craft beers, Guinnesses. Like, I thought, job done, I'm happy with this. Like, looking across, thinking everyone's going to be smiling. There's just all the French lads like, oh, oh, no, 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 no. No. Nah. I was like, oh. That's culture. I was like, that's culture. I was like, all right then, all bar one. Like, 20 minutes later, there's like, 40 bottles of flares and all this like sort of trashy stuff but my god it was it was a big night and you look at the french players there like they're all oily as hell they are good looking bastards and there's <laughs> like i felt like a bouncer for for english birds just english women just like que queuing up for the french guys it was unbelievable but um yeah who, a proper a proper night who was the best who was the best on a night out that week um comes to mind two or three of the best you, you mentioned yeah olivion yeah, I mean, good on and off the field. Just he's brilliant on it. He's like, from a player point of view. I've always, I think he's unbelievable. I really respect his what he does on the field. Um, and I always thought, right, is he going to dig in? And like they, they, they do, they do dig in and they dig in hard. And he kind of led from the front. You know, there's there are, I guess, maybe traditions where you're like, okay, we've got to be here by six o'clock, and everyone's got to be ready, and you know, you've got to have your your game your game mind on and stuff. But uh yeah, I'd say he he was he was bang on. Um, so, I mean, scouts went really well, like yeah. really, really well. Scouts is that um, there then? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He uh, got the pass. Boxier was was on on point because scouts said the towel was on point. Surely Maitland Lewis says that Will Skelton's the hard man to get the pass from the misses. So, but he's on. He's, look, he's, he's on the bar. He's, so he's, he's on the bar and, he, and he's out. And yeah, he, but he must he must take some downing on the beers though. Like a man, no, he's man got hollow weighs, bones. Yeah, like yeah, you can drink really quickly as well. Really, I mean, yeah. I, the kind of thing that would terrify me. Yeah. You know, the the thought of even having like one for every three he has. Yeah, as he's a, a big man. As an average size human, yeah. he's an. I mean, he's a behemoth. Yeah, he's like a freak. Size nineteen shoes. He's like, <laughs> what do you do with that? Like, um, but yeah, he, he's a big man. He can obviously drink. Um, but uh, I'd say overall, like a really good, really good vibe. Like people understood not to take the piss and not like trash places and fight and that. But, <laughs> but like, they, they, yeah, well, it is a good, I mean, yeah. especially when you got like, you know, 30 lads who are, who are charged up. But um, that was good. People looking after each other as well. It was, you know, a few people getting carried home and looked after and yeah. Well, the French say, are a bit more refined, aren't they? Yeah. They are, they're classy individuals. When you think back, I guess, acro across the rest of your career, Boatload of England caps, mm. you know, uh, Premiership and uh, European titles with Saris, British and Irish Lions mm. tours. What are the What are the other things that kind of jump out for you throughout your career? That the kind of, those kind of high points. Um, Any time beating 
Right. Uh, anytime. Uh, <laughs> uh, now, nah, I'd say that the Leinster game, Leinster Hunting Cup final was, or Champions mm. Cup final was, was unbelievable. Um, and like, again, the whole, like, like night after the week after so on is, is all part of the memories. Um, but like, we were, we were losing that game and I, I think I, I dropped a kick off, which meant we, we, we were losing that game and then come out second half firing. Um, I think we'd lost a couple of players in the first half as well. Mako had to go off. It, and it, it's essentially, I think bar Jackson Ray, it was a, it was an international 15 versus an international 15 in terms of everyone had played yeah. for the country. So mm. the standard's good. Um, okay. And yeah, like those memories are, they're big games, you know, that like not everyone gets to do that. And I think that game was a, a decent game to win. A golden, like in the golden era of Saracens rugby, mm. you were there, you know, through that, yeah. that period of winning, yeah. you know, back to back domestic European titles. Yeah. I mean, that must have been just unbelievable times and yeah. the confidence and memories that you created through that, it must have just been mega. Yeah. And like, when I looked at what, what I came in at, like as in the player I came in, I was it was like disgusting. <laughs> so then to like to get the opportunity and to play all those games and have those memories. Um, yeah, what was the secret? What was the before. secret to the success? Because like you know, culture. It, I do, I do, I do yeah. believe culture. Like, the, the amount of stuff they put in place, you know, to uh, for good or for bad. Um, a lot of it was like it was all geared towards culture and all geared towards like keeping the team as long as possible so that. You know, you you don't have players leaving unless you want them to leave, and you can bring in players who want to be there, who desperately want to be there. You don't get like journeymen. You don't get these sort of like token players which come in and earn a huge lot and then leave. Like people are going in there for for the fact that they you know they want to win trophies, they want to be there and perform and train and and build some stuff off field as well. So it's like a lot of, a lot of losses into that at the mm. beginning stage as well. I think we lost a, a double. We lost. Um, a premiership loss of European you know like those things are all part of the journey I maybe might see the, the latter end of it but you know the three or four years at the start where we were performing very well but losing just because we hadn't quite figured out either the culture piece or the on field how to win the win the games those tight games but nah like yeah, the, the, uh, we, those sort of, like a lot of players in that group oh say Saris a lot and t- even from making sure that we go through uni at certain ages or do trades course or whatever it is, you know, that they, they work with you for the off field stuff as well. And you look at some of the companies that come out of Saris, you know, good performing companies. A lot of it was built because, you know, they could be bothered to help create connections yeah. with this person. And they could be bothered to make sure that you go and do a day at Deloitte or whatever it is, you know, and, and you get in that habit of, you know, oh, there is something off field, um, so yeah, I, I've got heaps of respect for them. But the RPA as well, I think, do a decent job. The the professional era that rugby's in at the moment, mm. I worry it's going too much and it's getting into what football is now. Mm. You don't want to lose sight of that. You've obviously experienced with Saris. Mm. It's important to get boys together culturally, mm. make sure there's a family feel, make sure boys go on good trips, yeah. bonding trips. That's clearly one of the big parts of Barbarians. Yeah. And it is a club at the end yeah. of the day, but they've still got those old school values. Yeah, how important is that? that it stays in rugby that that doesn't disappear, and we don't turn into yeah. football. No, I fully agree. And, and like that collection of right, we're going to bring a load of players from a load of different areas, stuff you all in one room, and, you, and you're going to get on, and you're going to have a good time. Like it happens, it it, uh, it happens every time, and they, everyone gets on and yeah. has a good time. It's it's amazing, and and I'd say more than half the performances are pretty good performances. Question I've got: This game coming up, yeah. who? would you want to see that's performing at the moment, playing, still playing, not pass player, yeah. that is tearing and tearing it up in rugby that should be involved in the Barbarians at the moment? We've had a few good I mean, ones. It would be nice to see Seattle. DuPont, wouldn't it? <laughs> I mean, like, it would be nice. It would be pretty special. Get DuPont in there. Yeah, I'd like okay. to hear a few off-field so there stories of it as well. Oh, do you reckon he's... I don't know, I don't know. But I mean, he's a classy yeah, individual, right? I want to see how he, how yeah. he functions off the field. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and a forward. Forward, current, current forward. Um, I'd like to see you, mate. Oh, mate, I'd love to be back out there. Thank you very much, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, Steve. Yeah. If we can make yeah. that happen, my my, I did the full week. I did the yeah. five days, oh, and yeah, then yeah. It's just tough, it wasn't right? as bad as the one before. But, we'll yeah, get yeah. that, but I did the full five days, and then got yeah. pulled the night before. You must, you'll be able to get Eddie's number off. <laughs> I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I'll do, I'll do Eddie's my greatest fan. 
I'm sure he's not, but like these sort of things, like this is the this is the sort of thing. I can we'll start a petition. Agree. Can build bridges, mate. Drop him a text for me. Drop him a text. Say, by the way, now. being right with Wills today, live good live bloke. on air. <laughs> good bloke. What do you reckon? Nah, I'll mate, just put he's bloke. Sh- yeah, he's shy. <laughs> he's fucking shy. Yeah. Knows, knows his way around London. Yeah. Yeah. I, oh, well, I did a good job. I did a really good job yeah. for those five nights. No, I'm and, sure. Uh, I, I, I don't think... know. Maybe it was for the best that the will game carry water. Off. Well, Carrie, what we've had a few people that have come yeah, on here that said yeah, that they yeah, would love to be involved in doing water. I mean, Gitz wanted to do a little bit, didn't he? He'd be a good water man, wouldn't he? He wouldn't he be good? Yeah, yeah and that's yeah, what we would, tried yeah. to link him up with Eddie Jones for this yeah, one. Yeah. Not sure it'd be yeah. water man. He said he thinks he would worry though. He's like, nah, I still see. I'm still nervous around Eddie. <laughs> he reckons he's nervous around Eddie Jones. I love this. I love that. Yeah. I can see it, but I, I tell you one one forward uh, by yourself, uh, Luke Handicky. And again, I've heard he's, yeah, he's pretty tight. good through Hoggy, who plays down oh, at Exeter mate. with him. He's a pretty good brilliant. guy off. off yeah, the yeah, that's what I mean. he's a well-rounded bar, but he's, he's made for it. Because um, that's the other thing Git said. He, he said he got on the bus the morning of the game and Travon Lenny said, you know, he, he said, if you didn't feel the way that, you know, you've had a good go, you haven't, you haven't yeah. done it justice. Were you nervous on the way to the game that you had overdone it in the week? Well, like... I, I, I said bit. that that Friday morning, I was like sat in bed, looking at scouts and just think I had like anxiety. I don't, I don't really get like yeah. super anxious about stuff. I I was like, I was like, what? Is, I don't know what's going to go on here. Like, um, I think yeah, on the way in, I think there, there's a there's a pride side of it. Like you don't want to you don't want to like go on a week on smash and then play absolutely crap. Um, even though there's the excuses there for you to have if 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 you do, but yeah, that nervous, yeah. Yeah. Nervous, and and like the big thing, like my family and friends were there, and like it's the last game. I, I wanted, I just wanted to enjoy the whole thing, and and that's the nerves around like maybe not enjoying it because of, you know, cramping up or whatever. Um, but yeah, like I remember I'm, I'm being in the you know in good nick going to play a game for Scotland at Murrayfield and, yeah. and sitting on the bus and looking and seeing some bloke half twelve at the pub, yeah, and just going fuck, I wish I was him. <laughs> Oh, I yeah, wish play, I was in. Of time for those I'm, days I'm, so, I'm, so, I'm so worried about playing today, but <laughs> yeah, then when yeah. you get there, it's all right. Yeah. I, that's how I imagine my feeling would be on the way in. Like, yeah, yeah. I wish I was just a bloke in that pub. Yeah. It's so much easier. Just sit there and have a beer and go and watch the game rather than playing it. Well, well Luke, um, you know, back heels, the, the, the dream, mm. the dream sign off at, at HQ, some, some memories that will, that will last a lifetime. Um, I guess that's a, a decent way of framing why you think the Barbarians might have a future in the game. Obviously, you know, the world game is continuing to to progress. Mm. The challenge of the Barbarians continue to stay current and, and a place in the game. Why why do you think that the Babas should continue to have a, a place within within the world game as yeah. I guess the game's most famous club? I, I don't know. It's, it's a pretty it's a pretty obvious one I'd say is like it's it's a it's it's like it is like a collection of different people and that sort of it's something completely unique. Um, it's just a proper spectacle. I think the fans enjoy it a lot more um, than, say, you know, some expo- exposition games. Um, it, it's something which a lot of retiring players or or players in their youth, sort of, it, who are like, on the edge of um, sort of international duty as well, like they get that pleasure as well out of it. And um, no, nah, it would be it would be a shame to see it, go, see it go. But from everything I'm seeing, there seems to be more and more Barbars games. So. Yeah, I think they're in a, in a in a tidy place. Good man, George. Thanks uh, so much for your time. The, probably the first and possibly the last back heel conversion we ever see in the game since uh, afterwards it was it was uncovered that it's, it's illegal. But Ryan, it's illegal. Yeah. It's yeah, illegal. I was getting hate hate ah. online. I was like, it's illegal. You're not you're not allowed to kick with the back heel. How ridiculous! Of course yeah. you are. I mean, no, I know. Yeah, no, no. It's oh, there. It, you have it. There you have it. It's a good little so fan. there you go. The first, the first, probably the first yeah. and last. Yeah. Certainly yeah. on the uh, Andrea Piardi, the Italian referee, I think felt the sense of the occasion and also probably acknowledged that the conversion went through. So he wasn't going to call you back. Yeah. He would have got booed by yeah, the yeah, forty yeah. or fifty thousand fans that were that, in the that'd ground. That'd be on a quiz one day. Who was the first and last rugby player to ever back heel a conversion? And it'll be you. Crush the sport. Congratulations. Thank you. Take that. Cheers, Cruzy. Well, cheers. Cheers, gents. Was involved there, but it's an interception. It's George Bridge. It's a breakaway try. Nunez Philly, somersaults him now. The 
Jeff George is going again, is he? Back heel there. Oh, oh, back heel! And he's got it. Little idea at the end for the Barbarians. You know what? It could work. Here's Bridge and the Barbarian fingerprints all over that try.